Okay, this is day four point one. It's the first uh, video I've made because I've been busy all day today doing interviews. Um, just got done with one. As usual, I, I can't play it for safety reasons, severe safety reasons, might I add. Um, but I, I like to give a little synopsis uh, of what I experienced and what I heard um, because I think it helps and I think it helps other people know that there are those of us out here fighting for the truth. So um, I did, I think, a three and a half or maybe four hour interview today um, with uh, victims, witnesses, and survivors. And again, um, just the, the amount of uh, uh, trauma and horror is, you know, every time I, I do an interview and go farther, farther down the rabbit hole, I feel like I'm never going to get to the end. And maybe that is true at some level. Um, so a lot of the things we talked about today had to do with some of the first signs and uh, I guess symptoms you would call it that this uh, one of the parents noticed um, in their child um, who later was uh, found to be tra being trafficked by um, their um, opposite parent um, who was a both the perpetrator of this child and also uh, trafficked this child. Um, we talked a lot about access to computers and Twitter and webcams and learned that um, this child was uh, proficient in webcam um, pornography by the time they were 13 or 14, um, already getting um, PayPal cards um, and being paid by adults from all over the world to, um, I guess you could say, perform for them. And you know, this, this was all introduced by the, the child's um, offending parent, um, this, these techniques, and also then introduced them to the neighborhood, um, to other parents and, you know, their kids, young kids. And a lot of this was done in a basement in a very well-known neighborhood with very, very well-known, high, high-ranking, I can't stress that enough, people um, that are still in those positions of power today. Um, I saw some of the um, texts that went back and forth. I, of course, I will not look at any pictures and um, I don't know if this person has uh, photographs and I don't, uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't wanna, I'm obviously not gonna look at any of those pictures. I did see some text and then this, this child obviously is not a child anymore. They're over the age of 18, but barely. And, you know, I'm just doing everything I can to help compile evidence um, and the trail and the trail that leads to many, many other children and um, not only a United States ring, but an international ring of um, not just child pornography, but child trafficking, child sex trafficking, um, satanic ritual abuse, um, rituals in general. Learned a lot about um, cartoon porn today that I was not aware of. Um, and I was uh, informed of how a lot of kids are introduced into this very sick and evil world um, of perversion. And I, I know a lot has gone on around Twitter and YouTube about Elsa or Elsa Gate, I guess you could call it, where um, in these cartoons, a lot of very disturbing content was being found and parents didn't even know that this was in these some of these cartoons that their little young, young children uh, were watching. These are cartoons made for, I think, probably, you know, five-year-olds or, or under. Um, and so I learned a lot about cartoon porn today <laughs> and didn't have an awareness of the depth and depravity that exists in that world. Um, also with anime um, and how it's used. Um, I learned how the children are taught of how to be the player in these cartoon porn uh, games in the beginning, which involve uh, cartoon figures, but um, they are full of scenes of some of the most horrific um, sexual crimes that you can possibly imagine. I, I really don't wanna say it on tape too much um, because of the horror, maybe I will at some point, but um, whatever your mind could think of, and you probably can't even think of this stuff, but we're talking about mutilation, we're talking about animals, um, we're talking about conveyor belts, and um, stuff that uh, really shook me to my core, um, thinking that 
very young uh, children are introduced into this world in this way by becoming a player in these games and becoming the perpetrator through video games in cartoons um, against um, other cartoon characters um, and that that is one of the ways they desensitize them and prepare them for the you know stronger and stronger stuff until you get into um, actual pornography so that was uh, an interesting aspect that I learned about today that I didn't I knew some of it but I didn't know the depth of it and I would just ask anyone that listens to this video if you have children I don't care really what age they are um, pay attention to what they are doing, what they are watching, their cartoons even. Pay attention to their video games. Even if they're watching video games that are supposed to be cartoons, find out what they are, what they're for, what the mission is. Get involved in the game first. Um, these things are being done to you know, desensitize children and get them involved in this very evil world. And a lot of parents are just... Um, they just don't know that some of this is going on. Some do, obviously, and are, you know, uh, purposely getting their children involved in this. But I would just encourage everyone to, uh, to really look at what your, your children are doing online. And on Twitter, um, we even talked about different Twitter places and sites that these, uh, uh, this, this one child of these uh, children, um, as they were young, young teens, uh, were able to get access to that is just so disturbing um it's left me a little bit uh, shaken i'm kind of rattled my voice is a little bit rattled um after hearing some of this stuff uh, so you know that's a lot of it we talked again about the connection between the judges and law enforcement and attorneys and cps and what they do to protective parents versus perpetrator parents who are considered elite or have some sort of maybe security clearance or something to that effect um, in the different pockets that um, you know are in the United States uh, it, of course it's everywhere but you know in some places it's just literally a spider web of lies and deceit we also talked about something very interesting that you know I've talked about before and that um, the personas of these people involved in this stuff um, are like night and day and they do it on purpose they they're trained and train themselves to do this so a lot of these people were involved in their churches um, some of them even like deacons and I went to all the PTA meetings and uh, were the coaches of the kids um, you know school sports and were always the people around you know being the the parent of the year and I'm not saying that there aren't parents of the year and that don't do these wonderful things. There absolutely are. But that is a pattern. And so you often hear people say uh, when someone is discovered that's been involved in this, like neighbors and people go, I would never have guessed that this person would be involved in this stuff. Well, yeah, they make it uh, very, um, very important to their group to put on this very good persona, this very, you know, churchy kind of clean parent of the year or whatever persona. Oh, I want to save the children, save the whales, save everything. Not that any of those are bad in and of themselves. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that is what they do. They do all the things that are in the light they do are uh, for goodness and, you know, to, to create this image and they do it on purpose and they practice and they have techniques and they train and they have ways of uh, protecting information about themselves and then in the dark or in the evil it, they are exactly opposite and some of the most evil and horrific things you can possibly imagine so that was another thing that uh, we talked about today and i personally know of this just from work i've done in the past but um, i think people need to be really uh, made aware and awakened. I'm not trying to scare everybody because there are just incredibly generous people and kind people that do great work and really, really want to help children. But I think you also need to be aware. Um, oftentimes when you see somebody that has the um, persona of perfection, um, whether it's perfection in their job or per just perfection like 
helper of the year kind of people, um, you're seeing a cover and you need to be aware of that because none of us are perfect. We all, you know, have our flaws and our problems and we all struggle with different things. Um, hopefully not, most of us don't struggle with these types of things that I'm dealing with, but um, nobody's perfect. And if that's what you're seeing all the time is just, you know perfection 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 and um you know help 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 and you know sending you know checks to charities and involved in charities and on and on and on um you know it can very well be a cover for something else and you just need to be aware of that that doesn't mean those people that everybody is like that i just want to bring that awareness out to people that watch this channel so i'm gonna take it from here i am i'm a little shaky um after this interview and listening to all, to all this today, which is okay, um, I'm still going to carry on and uh, I will give um, more updates as time goes on. But thanks for listening in. I appreciate it and I appreciate all the comments and feedback that you guys uh, give me. It's very, very helpful. And if you have other questions or um, want to know more, please send questions and I will get to them as soon as I can. I'm just kind of running, you know, to and fro right now. So thank you very much and have a blessed day.